Hello and uh, welcome to the fifth session in uh, this uh, course. Today we will be talking about teaching grammar, about approaches, uh, reasons uh, and uh, ways of teaching. But first of all, uh, let's quickly go back to what we know about uh, English language teaching. You probably remember that uh, ELT is uh, it about language systems uh, and language skills. Language systems and is uh, what we know about the language. Is it important? Yes, knowledge is very important. It's the first step uh, in skill formation and is the basis for success uh, at school. And it works really well with beginners and advanced learners. And it's what we are going to talk about uh, in these two videos, uh, because we will be talking about uh, teaching grammar and teaching vocabulary. However, we teach grammar and vocabulary only for performing language skills. Because uh, language is what our learners can do, what they are able to do and not what they know. They may know about the formation of present perfect, uh, but uh, they uh, may not be able to talk about the results uh, uh, of something for now. Yeah? So that is why yeah, we need always to remember that we go through from the stage, don't know, to through the explanation, then uh, the synapse is formed, uh, and uh, then finally, the action is automated, but only through many mistakes. So the conclusion here is uh, grammar is a knowledge that needs to become a skill. So how to do it? What do we do for our knowledge to become a skill? First of all, let's talk about two approaches in teaching grammar. It's uh, implicit versus explicit or inductive versus deductive form. So when we teach grammar implicitly, we have no grammar explanation. Usually this is the way yeah, that language is acquired uh, when you are a child uh, or very often kids at the kindergarten are taught this way here. Yeah. However, when the students become older, when they are school children or when they are students, they usually are taught with either inductive or deductive approach. Inductive approach is when you have the structure and the students have to elicit a grammar rule from it. The deductive approach is explain, example, and practice. If you remember about teacher-centered and learner-centered, you will probably think and say, okay, when we teach inductively, it is like, think about it now and answer before I answer. If we teach inductively, it is more a, I hope you answered right, it is more a learner-centered approach because uh, we give them time to look at the structure, to analyze it, uh, and uh, to make some conclusions. When we teach deductively, it is more a teacher-centered approach uh, because we explain first, uh, we give the examples, uh, and then our students practice it. Uh, so here is uh, how two of the approaches uh, look uh, in the textbook. Uh, which of them is inductive and which of them is deductive? Uh, come on. So here is a trick. Yeah. The first one is deductive uh, when we give the rule uh, and uh, then we explain how it is, how the comparatives are formed. Uh, and then our students are ready to practice. However, the second one is 
uh, an inductive approach when our students listen to the conversation, they see structures involved, they practice this conversation, and then they look at the uh, rule. Yeah? So they find more romantic here, smaller here, and then they induce the rule. Which of the approaches is more appealing to you. Uh, like, I wouldn't uh, say that uh, one approach is better than the other. Everything much depends uh, upon the situation. Yes, deductive approach is easy. Yeah? You present the grammar point, uh, and it is especially preferred by all the learners who need a clear explanation. However, an inductive approach is a more learner-centered one. It means that it involves students more. They think and they not just read, but they are at the stage of applying their knowledge. So very often you may use it when the grammar material is not really difficult, and uh, when you have time to involve uh, your learners into the process. Another important uh, question here is declarative versus procedural knowledge. What is declarative knowledge? Declarative is uh, when you can uh, tell the grammar rule. Like uh, present perfect is found with the help of. Is it necessary? Is it uh, really helpful? No, because uh, our idea is uh, to start feeling when present perfect is necessary and to start using it. Uh, so in our case, in the case of learner-centered classroom, we need to go from declarative to procedural knowledge. But uh, if uh, we talk about inter-class system, if we talk about learners, uh, and us as teachers, and if we think about uh, our students, uh, I would probably advise uh, to teach both declarative and procedural knowledge. Because um, the situation of success is very important. And when our learners uh, just start learning the language, they are very much school driven. They are driven with the situation at school and their school marks. So declarative knowledge may really help when they want to be successful at school. However, don't forget about procedural knowledge and don't uh, stick to learning rules. No, you do the rules by creating this learner-centered environment uh, when learners uh, are interested in uh, uh, when learners are interested in making the rule, uh, when there is some heuristic uh, approach, uh, and uh, when they come from a rule, like from declarative, from, from telling a rule to using the rule itself. So that's why uh, you also will probably choose not to present all points. Uh, and uh, finally, you remember that we always go from accuracy to fluency when uh, the skills uh, are formed. Let's look at uh, what we do in the interclass system for presenting grammar. First of all, uh, we present sentence structure and uh, for many years, uh, the symbols, uh, they make uh, uh, our students learn how the English sentence is structured. Also, we do lots of word formation or word building because this is very important uh, when we talk about uh, the vocabulary development. Uh, and uh, finally, with word formation and uh, with sentence structure, our students are able to do transformations uh, 
and to come from grammar to functions. Very often uh, when uh, we talk about grammar and many different, uh, many different trainings uh, tell us uh, to practice CCQs uh, or concept checking questions uh, when uh, teaching grammar, vocabulary or any structures. Uh, I love CCQs and I think that uh, they are really good uh, with more advanced learners uh, starting from pre-intermediate uh, and that's what we do when we teach for example tenses. Uh, yeah? They know that simple is uh, or means the meaning of simple is action or facts. Uh, the meaning of continuous is a process. Uh, it may be in present, in past, and in the future. So the best possible uh, CCQs for a sentence like, I visited several European countries last year, would be, is it happening now? Yeah? Is it an action or a process? Uh, did it happen in the past? Uh, will it happen in the future? Was it a process again? Did uh, we visit only one country? And uh, that is how our students uh, can better learn the map uh, and they also practice their comprehension. So CCQs are really good for practicing listening skills uh, plus uh, developing the knowledge. So um, we gave our students the knowledge and uh, we need uh, to start practicing it. If uh, your textbook uh, doesn't have uh, these levels of practice, like controlled, semi-controlled, and free practice, uh, I would advise you to develop uh, at least uh, a couple of tasks for it. Uh, so usually we have controlled practice. We uh, elicited or we explained the rule, and we have controlled practice. Uh, when, uh, let's look at it here. So for example, we we'll learn the rule and the control practice would be, we need to put is or are in the sentences, there is, or there are two drugstores in my neighborhood. Obviously the rule here is there is, there are, for describing locations, for describing places. And after learning the rules, you just uh, choose, one of the variants or you fill in the gaps. At the same controlled stage, it is here. Yeah? So we use language in not that restricted way here. So for this, mm -hmm, we can choose the tasks or we can develop the task like uh, complete the sentences above and say if it's not true for you. For example, there are two drugstores in this person's neighborhood, but there are only, or oh, there are three drugstores in my neighborhood. Yeah? So, and uh, you may complete the sentences and say here yeah, if it's not true, and then make it true. So, uh, the um, stage of free practice is very student-centered. Uh, it is communicative, open-ended, uh, and that is where we come to from knowledge to skills formation. However, uh, usually teachers are not advised uh, to go to free of practice uh, stage level uh, with starter and beginner level students uh, because uh, the uh, just are not able to do it. But if you feel that your students can do it, uh, you may try. And here are the examples of free practice. Uh, we already practiced constructions there is, there are. We talked about uh, our own neighborhoods. Uh, and now we can, uh, there is a picture, there are more drugstores, more cafes, uh, and you just describe it. Uh, or in pairs, uh, each person describes his or her picture and the other person retells. Uh, or you may find uh, several, seven differences uh, 
without looking at each other's pictures. So, so these are examples of how we may move from really controlled and strict practice to freer practice, which will finally bring your students to the development of speaking skills. Another important moment, uh, remember we taught uh, or we spoke about the safety of our learners uh, and uh, mindful error correction. So for grammar, uh, the error correction, uh, uh, this mindful and very mild grammar correction will be in recasting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so then I was so excited, I was excited. Uh, it just you repeat, but uh, the correct variant. Uh, you may repeat with rising intonation. You may uh, use uh, prolinguistic explanations uh, when the learners, uh, uh, when you explain, uh, and uh, but uh, you do it uh, with uh, the expression on confusion, especially when young learners, uh, yeah? So your learners may elicit or clarify request, or you may tell them that they are wrong. And you may also use the delayed correction. In the delayed correction, you don't correct at once, but you correct after your learners have already spoken. Uh, we'll have a special lesson on error corrections. Uh, I only thought uh, it would be much more useful if we discuss error corrections uh, with every type of work, uh, with knowledge and with skills. So recasting, repetition, prolinguistic, uh, everything, uh, all this uh, uh, ways uh, make uh, your learners feel comfortable and uh, you don't ask with a strict face, please tell again. No, just use this very mild and mindful ways of error correction. So uh, this is uh, almost everything I wanted to tell you. And now let's see what uh, uh, hypothesis about learning may be applied here. Number one. Grammar is taught throughout the course. Yeah? So we are not explaining grammar in a number of bullets. We give uh, this short explanation, which are relevant to the lesson. And uh, it is uh, called spiral curriculum. Yeah? Every year we make it uh, more and more advanced. Vocabulary and grammar are presented together in grammar structures uh, and uh, they uh, give us uh, the involvement uh, of learners uh, because they pronounce the structures, they can talk to each other and uh, that is how we go from controlled uh, to freer practice. Also, it is very important uh, to add here this uh, mm -hmm, uh, we can, uh, if uh, you remember well uh, what I talked about, uh, uh, just try to think and to remember what I need to end. Mm -hmm. It's uh, grammar is induced. We use the inductive approach. Huh? So the rules are formed by the students. And it allows us to be more learner-centered and to create these opportunities for deeper learning. So it's all about learner-centered classroom. And finally, uh, we see that mindful error correction will develop security in our classroom 
and uh, that is how our students uh, will feel valued uh, and secure. So that's all for now. And uh, in our next video, we'll talk about teaching vocabulary. Goodbye.